Hey everyone, welcome to Zero Trust Building I Am with Terraform. I hope you've all had a really wonderful cloud sack next so far this year. I have been just, just staring at the screen. This has been great. Uh, I hope you're all excited to become S3 IM experts and then automate it with Terraform so you never have to touch it ever again. Uh, that is the goal here today. I'm Kyler Middleton. I'm the Cloud Security Chick at IM Pulse. We're working to improve the state of IM and the education around it. Let's first talk about what I am is, and then look at a real world I am policy for S3 that is 800 lines long, built by hand, very scary, it's awesome. Uh, and then convert that policy to a Terraform module, and then we'll do a live demo. So everyone cross your fingers for me and we'll see how it all goes. Uh, let's get started. All right, let's talk about what I am is. I am, or the Identity and Access Management Service, is the tool used by clouds to control who can do what, where. It's the service that when you authenticate to uh, a cloud, you prove who you are. I'm Kyler, and it says you're allowed to do these things. It, it sort of gatekeeps you on what you're allowed to do uh, for all of your actions within the cloud. And in that way, it is sort of the bread and butter of zero trust because it controls all of the uh, services and actions within the cloud. IAM is primarily used to control access to the control plane, like building a server, shutting it down, restarting it, uh, creating resources. But for some services like S3, it also controls access to the data plane, direct access to the files. In AWS, these policies are represented as JSON documents, which permit a ton of flexibility, but also a ton of challenges because JSON is finicky around commas and quotes and the condition keys and actions of each IAM stanza, which is a grouping of permissions, can be complicated and overlapping and really boring and hard, which is really a terrible nexus for engineers, especially ones like me that like to talk really fast and uh, learn from videos and memes. Uh, because of all that, IAM is really hard for humans to understand and write. Uh, you shouldn't be writing I am yourself. You should be using a constructor tool, which is what we're doing today. Uh, okay, let's talk S3. S3 I am is super simple. Let's look, and that's totally sarcasm in case uh, my radar isn't on today for that. Let's review a real world policy, which gives a partner company access to a home directory in a shared S3 bucket. This bucket has many partners that access the same S3 bucket, and they each have their own home folder. Each partner needs access to their home folder, but not anyone else's, which sounds really simple, right? Uh, in fact, it's so simple, you're going to be like, this is so easy. Why is there a conference talk about it? So in all actuality, these stanzas are really difficult to write properly. So if this all seems incredibly complicated as I go over these examples, uh, you're onto something. Okay, let's look at each permission uh, that we will need to grant to each partner. The first permission stanza that will be on the bucket policy is list bucket permission, which lets a partner view the bucket and the files within it. Let's take a close look at this stanza because each of them will look really similar. We assign a SID or a security ID. This is totally optional, but if it is set, it has to be unique for each stanza within a policy. Then the effect, either allow or deny. Denies take precedence, so you have to be careful how you structure your IAMs because you can easily block stuff, uh, not realizing that it's uh, denies first instead of specificity, like networks and firewalls and a lot of group policies, all sorts of other services use specificity first. Uh, and then the principle. This can be multiple principles, a single one. It's a unique ARN for a user, group, role, something you'd authenticate as another principle in a different AWS account that the partner will connect to us as. Uh, then an action or a set of actions. This one's S3 list bucket. That's the particular API call that you use to list the files or folders in a bucket. We can Google that and research it and find out what it does. And then a resource, which is the name of the bucket. And then a condition. These are optional for stanzas, but they're required in this situation. For this permission, we don't want our partner to be able to list files across all the folders within the bucket, we want them to only be able to list the files in their own folder. So we set an S3 prefix filter of the folder name and any recursive paths with that wildcard star. Let's go over a few other stanzas that you'll want to set for each partner also. Uh, next is read delete. We want our partners to be able to get or download and delete file and folder objects within the bucket only within their folder path. 
notice we don't use a condition here. We reference the bucket and then the folder name directly in the resource field. Did we need to do it differently for this stanza? I have no idea. This is how we wrote it and it worked and I'm too scared to touch it now. So that's the way it stays. And then writing to the folder. We want our partner to be able to put files into the folder in case they want to share stuff with us, right? So we grant them S3 put object on the bucket and the home folder assigned to them using the star for recursion. Um, and there's an interesting condition here. We match the S3 X Amazon ACL. I have no idea how to say that, uh, how I'm supposed to pronounce it for bucket owner full control. Object ownership within S3 is complicated with the uploading user retaining ownership of the object generally. We can use the condition to require that a client permission setting is set during upload to permit the bucket owner, being us, to be able to read the file, to be able to see it, which is, of course, what we want. Um, if you don't have this condition, it's feasible that a partner could upload a file that you can't read and you'll be billed for. So not great, not what we want. And then we want to deny any other paths. This is a great fallback security measure. So first we grant a bunch of access. You can read, you can list, you can see the bucket. And then we deny all the other stuff, all the other folders, all the other paths. How we actually achieve that in IAM is pretty complicated. We deny a string not like the root or the folder name. And we also use a null match to make sure the S3 prefix isn't there. And if you're nodding along like, yeah, totally, that makes perfect sense. I think you're a robot. So just check that. We're denying any file listing that isn't the home path with a false match against a null. You know what? Let's just agree. I am can be super complicated and leave it at that. And also don't forget to create the S3 lifecycle configuration to make sure all the old files are cleaned up. You don't wanna just leave files in your partner's folder around forever, right? Cause you're paying for that access. So who do you trust to update this policy? And say you, you, you had a new partner and you needed to onboard them. Would you trust a non-senior engineer to update this policy? And would you be able to sleep well at night if you didn't double check it yourself? Imagine someone copy and pasted all those stanzas because it's written, right? Someone did a lot of hard work and wrote the stanzas and now you copy all of them and you have to update the uh, ARN, you have to update the folder path and you miss one of those ARNs. Well, your company just granted a partner access to another partner's home folder. In regulated industries like healthcare and finance, your company might win the privilege of a front page news the next day and federal regulatory scrutiny because of that bad copy paste. So are you scared? I'm scared. This talk was inspired by a real life example. The company was sharing federally regulated data with nine partners. The IAM policy that we just talked about was built by copy and pasting Terraform by hand, and the total policy was more than 800 lines long. Uh, those facts together sufficiently scared me that I decided I need to fix this, and then I'm going to do a conference talk about it. So welcome to the conference talk. Should we automate it? Yeah, duh, of course we should. That was rhetorical. We should definitely automate this super scary, potentially business-threatening thing. Let's talk about how. Terraform to the rescue. I love Terraform. Let's build a Terraform module that takes minimal inputs and builds that policy for us. That sounds useful, right? And Terraform is just incredibly useful here. There's an AWS data resource that lets us build an IAM policy locally within Terraform. Data resources within Terraform are generally used to call data from somewhere else, like reading an attribute of a cloud provider or a file, but they are perfectly misused by this provider to locally build some IAM policy documents. First of all, this might look a little complicated over on the right with all that Terraform compared to the same stanza that we wrote in IAM, but keep in mind, you're building the Terraform version one time ever. We only have to be super smart for a couple of hours. So just load up on caffeine like I did here today and write a module that'll do all the hard work forever. Next time we need to add some IM, we'll send a partner name and a partner ARN to the module. It'll write all of the yucky JSON for us. And we won't even have to remember what the acronym IM stands for. Cue the margaritas. On line two, we have a for each there we go, which means Terraform is going to iterate over the data we sent it and potentially build a lot of copies of this stanza. Because remember, we need this one time for every partner with the specific folder. 
We use a Terraform reference interpolated into the SID that should be unique for each partner. Their name represented in Terraform is the each dot key here. Uh, for the principles, we iterate over all of the principles sent. Most partners only have a single ARN, but in a real world business case this talk is based on, there was one partner that had three ARNs. So we added support for that to the module. Not a big deal. We iterate over them and pass them as a list. Even the conditions are present down at the bottom. They look a little different with Terraform, but they totally work, I promise. And then we build the get and delete permission. Do you remember which conditions exist on which permission stanzas? Because I don't, and we talked about it like five minutes ago. Then we put, build the put object permission for each partner. We set the S3X Amazon ACL condition again. When you implement this pattern and empower your entire team to onboard a new partner, which conditions do you think you'll need to teach them and they will need to remember and understand? If you build this right, none, <laughs> which is the right answer. It's what you should be striving for. Then the most twisty turny permission, the deny not string with no provider false match. I haven't had nearly enough coffee to understand what this actually does. So let's just trust that the, the Terraform is correct here. And then we go all Voltron and combine all of the mini policies into a single mega policy that contains all the ones we just talked about. Thankfully, that same IAM policy doc data source can read over every sub policy. And with the help of some Terraform iteratives, for loops, we generate a mega single policy that can be assigned to an S3 bucket. And here's how we'll call the module. Keep in mind, this is the only part that most of your team will ever see or care about. All that complicated JSON and IAM is now hidden behind a module that does all of the work. We send over the name of each partner, like AFC Richmond, because I watched too much Ted Lasso the last week, and hi, mom, and also the ARN or ARNs that partner will use to talk to us. The module does literally all the rest of the work. Who do you trust to update the policy now? I mean, I hope the answer is almost anyone on your team, and it's certainly going to be more people than fully understand all the IAM stanzas that you would need to write by hand to do it yourself. We're going to do a demo if we have time. I think we do, but let me first just say thank you, and then we'll totally do the live demo. Uh, thank you so much. I'm Kyler Middleton. Come say hi, kyler.omg.lol. We'll have an FAQ, and I'll be around in Slack, or I'm on Twitter. I'm everywhere. You'll find me. Uh, but let's switch out to my local computer and we can do some live stuff. All right. Up here at the top, I am building, hopefully you'll see my screen. Someone will message me if you don't. Uh, I'm building a couple of IAM users locally. That's totally not required. That's just for the purposes of this demo. And then we're building an S3 bucket right there on line 14. And then line 18, we are calling public GitHub module. You'll be able to see that at the uh, URL that's embedded into the end of the PowerPoint, and I'll put it in the Slack room too. And then we are passing what we went over in the PowerPoint, which is just the construct, just the map of maps of all of this information, the principal name, the name of the partner. Sometimes you can override some of the attributes that we built in. Um, and that's it. And we can see here, if I run a Terraform apply, we're authenticated, hopefully. Live demo, I believe in you, live demo gods. And let's say that we need to suddenly onboard five users. Now that's 400 lines of IAM and about a hundred lines of the cleanup code that uh, the lifecycle configuration for S3. So let's paste that in. You can see we're building them again, totally not necessary just for the purposes of the demo. And if we scroll down, we can see partner five with I am partner six, partner seven, partner, seven, partner eight. Let's save it and let's run our Terraform apply. This will finish in about 30 seconds and you'll see it create a whole bunch of users, generate all of the policy. I'm going to scroll up. Don't feel like you need to follow all this because it's a lot on screen. And you can see it's building the Terraform rules, expiration days. This is the cleanup code. A little bit further up, we see it's building individual stanzas. So this is deny non-home for partner eight. It's the deny with the null, null um, resource and the condition of string not like. We don't really care because we have gone over this Terraform code. We validated it. It's perfect. And now we're just running it against a whole bunch of new principles and we're done. And it looks like we took 
32 seconds to write almost 500 lines of perfect configuration uh, using a constructor pattern in Terraform and we're done. And we can kick back and have a margarita because this is perfect and we don't need to do anything else. And I think that's gonna be all for me unless we wanna do some FAQs.